What is happening, everybody? Welcome to another edition of TK's Two Cents. Today, I'm excited to talk with you about the importance of not feeling guilty about your success. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about giving your, your dreams a little room to evolve. So let's go ahead and dive right in with the first tweet. All right. It's okay to be grateful for the positive experiences in your life, even when there are people who haven't had those same experiences. Being empathetic towards the suffering of others is not the same thing as despising the unique blessings God has for you. Have you ever had trouble feeling grateful for something good that was happening to you because you were too busy feeling guilty about someone in your life that was deprived of that very good thing. Maybe for you, you found somebody that really loves you and thinks the world of you, but you're surrounded by people that are always venting about being lonely and never having good friends or companions. Or maybe you love your job. You have a lot of creative freedom. You're compensated well. You love the people that you work with. And you're surrounded by people that are always complaining about not liking their job. It can be really easy in those moments to get so caught up in the guilt that you feel for what other people are going through that you deprive yourself of your own need to embrace the positive qualities in your life. I remember one time I went to work. I had this fantastic weekend. I had a lot of good news I wanted to share. And it was like on a Monday, right? And so I walk in and I say to one of my coworkers, how was your weekend? And they said to me, terrible. And they spent like the next two minutes just telling me all the terrible things that they didn't like about their weekend. And then after that, they were like, how was yours? And you know what I said? I, I said, it was all right, man. It was all right. You know, I totally downplayed my weekend because I didn't want my happiness to feel like I was trying to slam dunk on that person. You know, I didn't want them to feel like I was throwing my joy all in their face. And that's a legitimate concern, you know, um, but I want to talk about how you can balance being genuinely grateful for the good things that happen in your life with the desire to be empathetic towards other people and their suffering. The first thing I wanna say is that there is no contradiction between those two things because being grateful is not the same thing as mocking other people for not having what you have, nor is it the same thing as bragging to other people obnoxiously about how amazing your life is. That's not what being grateful is about. Being grateful is about looking at the things in your life that are going well and, and exercising the courage to be honest about those things and then exercising the commitment to build on those things. So it is possible to say, God, I thank you for the healing that you've done in my life and in the same breath say to a friend, I'm so sorry to hear that you're hurting in that way and I'm here for you. And if there's anything I can do to help, don't hesitate to let me know. You know, here's the interesting thing about gratitude. First of all, when people are feeling bad about things, you want to not only be able to empathize with them feeling bad, but you also wanna be able to empathize with their desire to feel good. And you cannot do that successfully if you don't see feeling good as a legitimate experience to have, right? Here's the other thing though. When you are plagued by guilt over the good things that happen to you, you overlook the very resources that allow you to be a blessing to other people. So let me use money as an example because it's concrete and it's easier to explain this way. Let's say I have a hundred dollars, but I believe that money is evil and I'm always feeling bad about having money because I think money is a bad thing. All right, so now I have a friend who needs some money. I have money and I can give that to this friend, but why would I do that if I believe that money is evil? If I believe that money is evil, I'm just making this person's life worse by giving them this thing that they need. In order for me to be a blessing to this person, I actually have to see myself as offering them something that is legitimate, something that is desirable, something that is good. So I need to have a positive attitude towards these resources that I possess if I'm going to use them in a constructive way that helps people. Now, some of you may be asking, okay, but TK, help me out. What if I feel like guilty about being privileged and having all these things that other people don't have and you know, I just feel terrible because I wanna help people? 
Well, we need to make an important distinction. There's a difference between being grateful for what you have and having the desire to use what you have to help other people live better lives. Now, if you're interested in that latter thing, helping other people live better lives, you're not doing them any good by wallowing in guilt and self-condemnation and by spending all of your time cursing the resources and assets that you have in your life. If you really wanna help people, the first step to doing that is showing some appreciation for the good things that you have in your life and then saying, you know what? I want other people to feel this too. I want other people to enjoy these blessings as well. I'm not gonna resent the resources that I have. I'm not gonna resent the good things that happen to me. I'm gonna do whatever I can to make sure that I expand the circle of goodness so that other people can experience awesome things as well. You're far more likely to be useful to other people, to be inspiring to other people, to be encouraging to other people if you can own the good that's happening in your life. You simply can't be psychologically available to people that are having a bad day if you don't believe it's okay for you to have a good one. Let's go to tweet number two. Your dreams will die if they never evolve. Follow your dreams, but don't forget to let your dreams follow you. You are constantly changing. Are you allowing your dreams to change with you? Are you making room for your dreams to keep up with the person you're becoming? If I had to say this message in a single sentence, it would be, do not be a slave to your childhood dreams. Now, there is nothing that I love more than a good story about somebody who, you know, made up their mind they were going to accomplish something when they were 12 years old. And then in their 40s, later on, it comes full circle and they're able to achieve that thing. I love a good Tyler Perry type story where it's like, I always wanted to buy my mama a house. And then I was able to achieve this dream and buy my mama a house. That's great. If you still love your childhood dreams and they are still a reflection of the person that you are 20, 30, 40, 50 years later, have at it. However, for many of us, those childhood dreams can easily become a prison within which we cut ourselves off from all of the wonderful new emerging possibilities that come with time. You know, um, having an arts background, spending some time living in LA and, and, and being around, you know, the arts and theater people and music. I've seen a lot of people, you know, pursue a dream in something like acting or music and then they develop other interests along the way. Maybe they have interest in production or they have interest in business. I'm actually an example of this. And one of the things that many of those people struggle with is feeling like, well, wait a minute, am I selling out? When I was 15 and 16, there was nothing that I wanted to be more than an actor. There was nothing that I wanted to be more than a singer. But now here I am as a result of pursuing these dreams or meeting different people, here I am now and I find myself changing and I find new desires cropping up, am I selling out? You're only selling out if you are abandoning the preferences, priorities, and principles that matter to the person that you are today. There is no need for you to be loyal to some version of yourself that has expired with time. You are constantly evolving. Your dreams should evolve with you. If your life is not static, why would your dreams be static? Always take inventory of your life to evaluate the person that you have become and make sure that you are upgrading your dreams continually in order to keep up with the dynamic you. You know, life is a lot more fulfilling that way. Life is a lot more guilt-free that way. Be faithful to the person that you are because, you know, when we're, when we're children, our dreams are approximations of you know, the best concept we have at that time of the good life. But I remember when I was when I was 20, I was talking to a mentor and he said, if I had you write down on a sheet of paper, your concept of the good life and show it to me again in 20 years, you would laugh. That dude was right. I laugh at my concept of the good life when I was 20. There's very little that I wanted when I was 20 that I actually value right now. And what you desire today may be the same, it may be different, that's not the point. It's not about being dogmatically loyal or dogmatically disloyal. It's about keeping up with the person that you become. Follow your dreams, but don't forget to let your dreams follow you. Peace out, everybody. Have an awesome weekend.